Hello everyone, I just thought I would record a video to give you my take on the post-Covid changes to the Part 3 and the Standards Check because I know people have read the Standard Operational Procedure and have interpreted it in different ways. Um, I also have done that, I've also read it and interpreted I've spoken to a few examiners about it as well and of course we're at the very early stages of this being implemented um, and uh, over the next two or three weeks we will have a bit more of an idea about how it pans out um, in the real world and not just on paper but to reassure some of you that have some tests coming up um, there are very little changes now let's focus on the changes that we do know so we do know that um, the uh, standard check or the part three will now be approximately 45 minutes long However, that's not as big a change as you think, and we'll come to uh, come to that in a moment. You will be expected to wear masks, as will your pupil and as will the examiner. Um, and the examiner will be um, wiping down the car when he gets in and, uh, and out. So don't be offended. It's not a case of him thinking your car is messy. Uh, it is just something that they will be doing as part of their policies and protocols. Um, apart from that, there aren't any massive changes. You will get a phone call from the examiner beforehand, so in the few days, possibly even a couple of weeks before your test is due, to make sure that you're going to turn up because of course the system is quite in demand at the moment, so they absolutely want to make sure that space is going to be filled and to make sure that you do understand the rules have changed in terms of um, their expectations of that lesson. So the 40-ish minute lesson, um, certainly wheels moving for 40 minutes of those lessons. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and the criteria change that now says that they don't want you to bring up a beginner pupil. Now what they say, uh, what they mean by that is they don't want you to be taking up a pupil who is predominantly going to be sitting at the side of the road and having a talk to or looking at controls etc etc they want the car moving because they want adequate ventilation so you will be expected to have your windows open not completely open couple of inches is perfectly all right i suggest that you look of ways of, of um, lessening your wind factor and the rain so if you have um, uh, your um, wind resistant uh, plastic on your windows um, that is possibly worth looking at um, but again, to a certain extent, if it's pouring with rain and the wind is howling, an examiner will control his own window as well. So they're expecting, obviously, ventilation. Now, they are going to phone you. They're not going to ask you massive of information because, of course, it could be that the situation will change between the phone call and the um, the time that you go up for your test. So in terms of your pupil choice um, and uh, the subject that you might be doing, you don't have to be 100% sure on exactly what it is that you're going to be doing. You will, however, have an opportunity of meeting the examiner not at the test centre. So you will have the opportunity to meet an examiner up to five minutes car journey away from your chosen test centre. And this would mean the examiner would drive his own car to where it is that you're going to uh, to meet them. And uh, the lesson can start there rather than at the test centre and, of course, finish there as, as well. There are some advantages to this, and I would suggest that you think about those because I think you can make it work for you. I'd say the two main advantages are you are going to be in the middle of a lesson at the point the examiner gets into the back of the car so whatever area it is that you're choosing to be in will be the area that you're going to continue to do that lesson in so inviting the examiner to that area um, then makes sense rather than you having to pick up an examiner and then drive to the area that you're practicing the skills that you want to with your pupil the second and possibly the biggest advantage is that psychologically not going to a test centre, I think, is a really big deal. So not having to go there to have to sit and wait or wait for an examiner to come out. It's almost as if when we invite the examiner to meet us in the road or roads that we are going to be using with the pupil, that we are inviting an examiner into our world rather than the other way around. And I think psychologically that can make a big difference choice is yours and you don't have to do that you can start at the test center and if there isn't an agreement in terms of where that test is going to start or an examiner who couldn't for whatever reason get hold of you the assumption will be made that it would start at the test center um, so let's look at that at that first advantage there is this assumption that you will be into a lesson the lesson probably will have started now this doesn't mean that you can't have a plan in your previous lesson and that 
you might not have let the people drive at that point and the examiner is going to join you at the start of the lesson knowing what it is that you're going to be working on from the previous lesson that still stands no different from that point of view but it does give you the option of having a drive with the pupil first so it could be that you choose with your pupil to be doing a 5 10 15 minute 20 minute even an hour's lesson before the examiner gets into the car meaning that the lesson that the examiner then sees on your standard check or part three is the lesson based on the goals that have been made from that 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever you've done beforehand. So in terms of knowing exactly what you're going to focus on, there is no reason to have this set goal weeks and weeks in advance. Now, I think this can work to your advantage because I think one of the disadvantages of the standards check in the part three before had been this train of thought that we had to have a set lesson plan that we have predicted, we have scripted, we have rehearsed, we have set a set area for, um, and the disadvantage of that has been that we've now been over prepared we've been blinkered to what it is that we're going to do with that pupil and then neglected to recognize the pupil's needs at the point where that changes from the pre-planned lesson that you had so you're far more likely if you let this work in your favor to be in the moment to be truly giving a lesson based on what the pupil's needs are on that particular day or even that particular 10 minutes that you have done what the needs are so it's going to become more relevant to the pupil as well so you Use that to your advantage. So let's imagine that here you are having started the lesson, you're in the area that you think that you're going to be uh, using, you've planned to meet the examiner either at the test centre or in that area. Um, what you will do is you will finish that 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever it is that you're going to do with your pupil before the examiner gets in the car with some kind of summary of what it is that you have done. And what I'm going to show you now is just a little video of this summary of what you would do. So this is just an example of a pupil that I've had um, in, the, in, in the last couple of days. Um, not scripted, completely authentic, but just to give you an idea of what you might be talking to your pupil before, with, um, about before the examiner gets into your car. So this is pre-test conversation. Have a little listen and then we will see where that leads on to in terms of um, the conversation you then have with the examiner. Okay, so we just had a little drive through the village. Yes. Give me a couple of things that happened. Um, being on the road that is not that hasn't got the traffic, the park cars on it, the obstacles, there's a lot more to think about. Tell me what you're meaning. So being on a road that hasn't got the park cars on it, do you mean on our side? We yes. haven't got the park cars yes. on our side. We've got the no obstacles on our side. Okay. It's the other side of the road that has obstacles. Okay. Why was that more complicated then? I don't know, but it did fend me off <laughs> a lot more then. I think it's because I have to think about whether or not all the cars have space to go. Okay. No. So just to confirm, when we're driving down a road yes. and there are parked cars on the right. Yes. And there are no parked cars on the left on our side. Who has the priority in terms of who goes? We do. We do. Yes. Why was the situation different in the roads that we just done? Why did we end up being the ones that changed that priority? Because there was more cars and there were spaces for them to stop to wait for us to pass you're absolutely right so they were committed at the point yes. where we come down the road we can't just barge our way down the road because no. they've already started their yes their drive and then there was not enough spaces for them all to pull in so we had to be the ones that held back yeah yes. and that seems more complicated yes i wonder why you said you wonder why i wonder why uh, having a proper think similarly that could happen if we were on the side of the road with the obstacles because if I was to put into a, a space and wait it could be the same thing like if one of the car behind me has space okay. to also go in okay yeah. yes so putting ourselves in the other situation again yes and thinking about what we would have to do if we were committed yes. and had people behind us yeah yeah I agree which is not something I thought about the first time uh-huh <laughs> we drove uh-huh yeah <laughs> Yeah, it did seem more complicated second time yeah. around. Absolutely. 
based on the fact that it just seemed more complicated and more to consider and take into account what kind of things will you take into account from now on then so what what can our thought processes be as we're coming down the road like that so if i'm going on this dive about the obstacles think how many cars can i see and can i vote how many spaces they have okay and if there's only like one car and there's quite a big gap uh -huh. and it, if it's my quality and it's safe and they're not committed then i could go okay if there's like four cars then they're all not going to fit in that one space yeah. then i should probably pull back yeah okay so is it a change of mindset almost change of the fact that with some advanced awareness and planning of the situation we change that mindset of always believing we have the priority if we don't have the obstacles to a case of considering the other people and what their situation is yes. not just our own yes okay okay does that sound like something that we can practice would it be useful for us to go up and down a few roads where the situation changes continuously depending on which side of the road we're on yes i think it would be okay okay let's let's do that then let's okay. do a little bit of work on that yep so you can see if you've just watched that video that I've had the conversation with Zara based on a drive that we've done. The drive didn't last very long before we had an opportunity to be exploring things that she needed to work on. Um, so at that point, I'm thinking if now I had an examiner meeting us, we're going to go off and meet the examiner. Um, we have a clear understanding of Zara's needs today and what is going to be worked on. I'm then going to find the examiner, whether he is going to be meeting me in a particular road or I'm going to be at the test centre. And I'm going to have a conversation with the examiner on the pavement. So we'd leave our pupils in the car at that point. We're going to meet the examiner on the pavement or in the test centre car park, depending on where you are. And the examiner would then take that opportunity to obviously say hello and introduce himself to check your paperwork. So your green badge or your pink badge, if you are on a pink badge licence or your driving licence, if you're not on a pink badge or have an expired pink licence. Um, to have a quick look at your car and to ask you um, uh, the details about your pupil um, and to give a little bit of a summary about what it is that you are going to have done. So that is going to happen on the pavement before the exam starts. The examiner will get into the car, he'll introduce himself to your pupil and that will be no different to how it was before um, in terms of them putting the pupil at ease and saying hello and, uh, and, uh, and feeling quite welcoming as they got into the car. So they're now going to get into the back of your car you now have an opportunity to have a three-ish minute conversation with your pupil that summarises what it is that you have done in the previous 5, 10, 15 minutes, summarises the conversation of the goals that were set before the examiner got into the car um, and to just reconfirm your roles and responsibilities. So have a little watch of the next video. The next video is about three minutes long and this is now imagining the examiner had jumped into the back of our car and Zara and I are going to summarise the conversation that we've had based on the drive that we did before the test um, and uh, and almost set the scene if you like between the two of us before we set to, we set off again to then complete the goal that we then come to. Sarah, just summarise for me what we have just done in the last 10 minutes. We have met a few people. <laughs> <laughs> As in meeting situations. Yes, yeah, meeting absolutely. Situations. We've met a few people. Um, and we've just driven around the village. Uh -huh. um, con concentrating on situations where I might have to stop or go. Okay depending on the situation. So that interacting with other people with yes. meeting situations, absolutely. And um, what did we decide was going to be the plan that was going to be useful for you to do and why? Find a few roads where we have the chance to have different situations. Okay. So a chance where we're on the side with obstacles and yeah. a chance where we're maybe we're not on the side of obstacles. Yeah. So we have the obviously the priority yeah. um, and whether or not the other side of the road kind of how be the, the other side of the road what their situation is okay. whether or not that changes okay so reading the situation depending yes. on what is going on what are the main skills then that we're going to be practicing so that that goes well definitely looking as far down the road as possible fab um, general awareness absolutely space awareness in case i do have to pull in 
and let to let other people go. Yeah. Um, kind of gauge how at what point they can still go past me safely. Okay. And how close I am to a car to make sure I can get out smoothly. Fab. So some general awareness, some judgment yes. that's going to come in there. Okay. Let's look at those general ways and judgment. In terms of those situations that we're going to go off and, and play with again and look at again, um, what's my role? How am I going to be able to support you to get this right? If you think that I need help, you mm -hmm. can obviously jump in. Okay, okay. And if I feel like I need help, I can ask you, okay. shout for you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So we'll work together. Yes. A bit of a team to kind of team do it. Up. So I'm hearing you say you're happy for me to give you some prompts yes. and to perhaps ask you a few questions and find out what you're thinking. Yes. And um, I guess just support you with that general awareness and planning of yes. what you're going to do. Sound all right? Yes, that sounds good. Okay. And as you say, just because we're going to go off and do the, uh, the, the route again, nothing has changed in okay. terms of my ability to be able to help you physically or verbally if I need to at any point. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. As we set off here then Zara, so let's look at the road in front of us, we're yep. going to move off from here. Where's our next potential meeting situation that's going to need us to be aware and use some judgement? Potentially someone coming out of the driveway in yeah. front of us, uh -huh. or someone coming around that corner, uh -huh. potentially, or I'm not sure how this junction works, someone turning mm. in. Yeah, mm. it's an unmarked junction from numerous angles isn't it? Yes. So. Think about where your biggest danger is coming from. Where do you reckon our biggest danger is coming from? That corner. Because? Can't see. You can't see. I haven't got a good view yeah, of it. Absolutely. So that's where the majority of your awareness is going to be. Yep. And how are you going to plan for it? If you imagine something coming around the corner, what's our plan? So how are we going to be prepared? To stop prepared to stop yes absolutely all i want you to do then is when you're ready we'll drive on we're going to continue yep. along this road yep being ready and planning for anybody that might be around the uh around the corner okay and let's go find some easy situation yes okay dokie over to you so you can see that conversation is fairly um, uh, fairly quick, fairly efficient, but it settles everybody down again. It acknowledges that there has been a mini break within the uh, within the lesson. Um, and remember, you can still be doing this if your lesson was last week and your plan is to progress from the lesson last week. It doesn't have to be the lesson that you were giving the pupil before the examiner got into the car. The principles are still the same. An efficient summary of what it is that you are doing, a recap of the uh, the goals, so the set goals for the next Next time the car sets off, what it is specifically you're going to focus on and work on and the reasons why, and of course some uh, roles and responsibilities, so just some confirmation of how you are going to help your pupil and what they are needing from you and what your expectations are of them. And that is, is wrapped up. Um, then of course you're going to structure your lesson. Now in terms of the structure of the lesson, that again is no different. So if you think about how much time you would have been spending on the move from an old standards check or a part three point of view, it's looking at 35 to 40 minutes by the time that you had completed your stops, you'd completed the summary at the beginning and the, and the, um, the debrief at the end. So it's not going to be vastly different from that point of view. Now there's a bit of a myth and rumour about the wheels moving. So does it have to be a wheels moving lesson? Yes, the wheels are moving, but again, that was no different from life before COVID. The examiners were hoping to see you demonstrating practical skills with your pupils, because that's what it is that they're learning. Driving is a practical skill. So of course, sitting at the side of the road to have a discussion or to debrief or to fill in some gaps of knowledge and understanding would be better to be done um, at the side of the road and not in a moving environment um, is very, very allowed. So if you're having to review a critical incident or you've recognised that people has a lack of knowledge and understanding, it would be better done at the side of the road based on their experience and their ability to be able to talk on the move. There is nothing wrong with that. The secret, of course, is going to be efficient again. So a little bit like that conversation you've just seen. It's a summary of what's happened. It's a why it's happened. What are the struggles with it? What are the solutions? Because the solutions then become the goal for the next bit of the drive. 
So that's how I want you to, to, to think about that. You are absolutely allowed to stop if you are feeling the need to be able to do that because it's going to be easier, quicker, more efficient to offer um, a, a visual aid at something or a, a couple of minutes with a car not moving to go through something um, so that learning can take place and we then go and put it into practice again on the drive. So be aware that you can still do that. Now the next video I have is just a summary. So again, a two to three minute video um, that I have produced again authentic based on a lesson that I've had with Sarah, but that gives you an idea of keeping the debrief that we're now going to do with the examiner uh, short and sweet and snappy and efficient. Um, now again, just to confirm, this is no different to what it was before. We used to pad it out with an awful lot of stuff. Not that the examiner was necessarily wanting to, to experience that. They're not wanting to see that. So this is just making everything that you were doing far more um, focused, if you like. And the hope is, is that actually we will see the standard going up because we're not filling it with waffle and uh, and the sound of our own voices. So just have a little look at the two minute video that I've done that helps um, to summarise the lesson we've done, completes the learning if you like, acknowledges that learning has happened throughout it and we've reflected all the way through, but allows the pupil to um, do a bit of reflecting and the pupil to say what the next step is in her learning um, based on where she is at the end of this lesson. Well done, Zara. Now, I know that throughout that drive, we were constantly reflecting and reviewing, but summarise summarise that last 35 minutes or so for me. I think it went well. Yeah? Yes, I think towards the end, I became a little, little bit more independent. Uh -huh. um, I gained a better understanding of spatial awareness and general judgement of cars and situations. Mm -hmm. That would mean that I would either have to wait and stop or whether or not I could find a gap let them go depending on where they were and how mm. many cars was in the traffic mm -hmm. um if they had space to all go in could i go or if i had someone behind me could i go mm. in a space if they had no space to go so we experienced all those different scenarios yes. to a greater or lesser extent yes and um you got some experience in in that judgment that decision making yes what worked what was what was helping What were you doing that just made those decisions easier? Looking as far down the road mm -hmm. as I could, mm -hmm. like, as possible, and trying to see as many cars as I could. Because mm -hmm. um, then if I came up to a meeting situation, I could then evaluate if there were so many cars behind this front car, would they have space mm -hmm. like, to turn in if I went? Or if I went... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I, I, I can visualise what it is that you, you are meaning based on what we've just done. Yeah. So, I'm hearing you say that your, your general awareness and looking as far up the road as possible is the thing that gives you time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To then make those decisions yes. and control the car. The sooner you spot them, yeah. the more time you have yeah, to absolutely. think of them. Absolutely. Based on today's drive then, so based on what you've done over this last 40 minutes or so, what's the next step for you? I think I'd like to do some more independently. Mm -hmm. I know at the end of today I started to be a bit more independent, mm. but I'd quite like to like, have more experience doing it independently have. to okay. gain more confidence. Okay, so you're happy for me to set up that for our next uh, yes. our next drive and, yes. and go for that. I agree, I think you're more than capable of doing that and that would be a good plan. Um, any questions about anything that we have done? Or is it just making sense? It's making sense. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well done, you've driven really well. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. I hope that's really helpful. Any questions, please ask me. Um, my own knowledge and understanding is going to grow over the next few weeks, and I'm very fortunate to be um, present as much as we are allowed to be on a number of part threes that are coming up and hopefully some standards checks when they start happening as well. Um, so I will very happily update if I see anything that I think is going to be useful in terms of logistics, how it works in the real world um, and any traps that I see that drive instructors are falling into um, perhaps because of the post COVID um, policies and protocols um, and we'll go from there. But I hope this has been useful.